This was this was a multi-faceted uh, decision in my life because it was for the greater good. As you know, I've been working very diligently on exposing truths, on revealing the fact that children have been abused in Hollywood for quite some yes. time, as you're, I'm sure, well aware. So happy that you're talking about and, that. And let me tell you, this is there is no more more important cause than this that we can be talking about or dealing with. So the point is, is that that is my mission in life. That is my goal. That is what I believe I've been put on this earth to do is, you know, I, I went through the abuse. I suffered at the hands of abusers. My best friend was raped and his life is gone as a result of abusers. And, and so for that very fact, I feel that, you know, God put me in this place to have this mission so that I could be the guy to expose it. Why? Probably because I don't have any dirt on my, under my nails. There's nothing that anybody could ever say about me right like bring up some crap from my past like oh yeah but what about the time when you raped that girl or right. what about the to time you did this you. Or, right Correct. there's nothing sorry folks there's nothing zero so you can dig all you want but you're never gonna find it and that's why I was chosen that's why I went through all the crap that I did that's why I suffered that's why I had such an abusive terrible childhood because at some point somebody up there or whatever knew that I was going to be the guy to have to expose this the brave stuff. soul. So the point is, is that now I'm doing it and I'm making this documentary. And when I started the documentary two years ago, uh, you know, it all started with I was going to do a film about it because I was on tour and it was really the last thing I wanted to do. I wanted right. to continue my tour. I had a hit record. Everything was going great. And then all of a sudden the Me Too movement started and then it was like, oh, well, now you got to talk about this. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about this on tour. And they were like, yeah, well, now's the time. Time's up. Da, 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 da. And I was like... Oh God! So I literally got so uh, so much force and so many people like slamming me. Just ten thousand new followers every minute on Twitter, going, "Now's the time! Now's the time! Name the names!" Da 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 da. So I finally was like, "Fine," and I had to shut down the tour. And then I had like three days of craziness where like my life was was almost taken from me. Uh, two trucks tried to run us over in the middle of Houston. Uh, the very next day, uh, we got shaken down by police in Louisiana. They made false. Reports reports saying that I was arrested for drugs even though I had no drugs on me and I was never arrested but that was the headline and then the third day all of a sudden I get a call from my manager saying the inquirer is going to put out a story about Corey being raped do you want to comment on it and I said no I don't want to comment on it thank you very much so there was three days in a row leading up to that so you know that this was all obviously planned it was all very meticulous so the point is at the end of that three days I sat down and I looked at you know the people in my band and I said I don't want to put you guys in danger everywhere we're going we're in danger right now yeah because you're telling people that this pedophilia ring is goes up to the highest elite correct? well of course it does you know that I, of I mean, course i do that's right. why i love that you're exposing it right but you know i can't expose the highest elite because i don't know who they are i mean i don't sit in those circles but what i do know is that you know there's low level people who are the ones that really do the, a lot of the dirty work it's the publicists the managers the agents the people who look the other way and pretend like nothing's going on right. and then they take it to you know okay well this kid's been used and abused if you know we want to really bury his career then let's like give him to the kingpin and the kingpin can like have his final way with him and destroy mm. him forever and then he's gone and then we dust him and we sweep him under the carpet and nobody will hear from this kid again H- and, have you and named, that's the system and you've named names Correct. I have named names, but I, I've only named my abusers because that's all I legally can do at this point. But that said, the documentary will go further and right. the documentary will name Hames abuser and it will lay out all the evidence and all of the witnesses who uh, are aware of this abuser and have known about this since Haim told them about it himself. So there's a lot of reports, there's a lot of history, and there's a lot of information that needs to be heard so that I can finally say, this is the guy who done it, right? Right, and are um, you surprised because I know after your book after you did the choreography that you were somewhat surprised that your colleagues you didn't have hundreds of them saying oh my god we didn't know how can we help how can we get involved nobody I can't believe it nobody stood with and I can believe it and it's bullshit it's disgusting isn't it it? is it's It's disgusting freaking disgusting because you know it's still happening of course it is but here's the point so uh, so what happened was after you know we were going to make a movie and it was going to be a 10 million dollar movie so I did this big campaign said I want to do a 10 million dollar movie I'm going to make my my book into a film and I'll direct it and it'll be great and will be you know intensely graphic but it'll show people what really goes on and then we raised like I don't know, a quarter million dollars or something, and then Judy Hame happened, and she goes out there, and she starts trying to tell everybody that I'm lying, and that it's all a fraud, and I'm making it up for my own good, and I'm just trying to scam people for money, all this crazy stuff. 
So people started listening to her and everything went the other way. And all of a sudden the campaign started losing. And so we just basically were like, well, screw it. It's not going to happen that way. You know, retract, rethink, how we get this pivot, out. I call it pivot. Right, pivot, exactly. <laughs> so at that point, I decided, you know what? Well, first of all, they started, she created an entire conspiracy against me with all these people involved who were then uh, claiming false claims, making accusations against me. So I had to take all the money that I had raised and spend it on defending myself in court, defending myself through publicists, def- you know, getting security around me because there were death threats and death attempts and all this stuff. So eventually I just said, you know what? Screw it. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll pay somehow. I'll find a way to get the truth out by making a documentary. It'll be much cheaper. It'll be much smaller. Yeah. But we're going to get the facts out. And people no matter love documentaries. What. And, right. And where are you with that so documentary? we shot the documentary. Great. The documentary has got a great director whose name is Brian Herzlinger, who directed My Date with Drew. That was his first film documentary that went theatrical worldwide. Great guy. Uh, so we've got the documentary. It's done. Now we just need a distributor. So what happened was uh, I started making the documentary with my own money, ran out of money, and then we got this call from these people at Marriage Boot Camp who said, hey, you want to come deal with your brother and his issues and your issues with him on our show? And I was like, um, how much are you going to pay me? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I love your honesty God because bless. that's exactly how I've worked. Right. Like, my, my son was diagnosed get with autism. Done. I needed speech therapy money. I'm like, I'll take that, there dis- you go. that really gross movie just to pay for well, this speech I'm not therapy. Say, I, I, I'm not saying Marriage Boot Camp is no, really gross. No, my, I'm my just saying, movie was. Right, right, right. I'm just saying you got to sometimes make sense. Sacrifices yes. for the greater good. And right. no, I didn't want to go back on reality television, but I did make a sacrifice for the greater good. And did and you learn I hope something? that it's therapeutic. I hope that it's positive. Yeah. And I hope that, you know, more than anything, my brother gets some healing from it because that was really the, the motivating factor was like, yes, I can do this for the greater good. And maybe it will actually help my brother and I's relationship, which would be great. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh.